Hello, I'm Leonard Maltin, and I'm here with Roger Corman discussing his long and interesting career. And Roger, if there's any doubt in anyone's mind as to why you've been successful, they need only look at this poster for Cage Teat we have hanging here. Women's Prison USA, Rape, Riot, and Revenge. There's a wonderfully provocative photo of these very typical prisoners, I'm sure. White Hot Desires, Melting, Cold Prison Steel. And then the icing on the cake, Bullet Holes, all through the words Cage Teat with an exclamation point at the end of Cage Teat. This is just, this is marketing at its finest. We used to have great fun making those ads. Everybody would join in and we'd kind of throw lines back and forth. And I would say, uh, come up with anything. It doesn't make any difference how crazy, because the wilder it gets and people would be jotting things down and then we would pick the best words and phrases and <laughs> stick them all together. Well, it sure worked on this one. A and did that pay off? It paid out very well. This one was Caged Heat, was Jonathan Demme's turn to direct. We had done The Big Dollhouse, The Big Bird Cage, The Big Bust Out, <laughs> and I felt uh, enough of the big, we have to go to something else. And Jonathan had been a writer, producer, and second unit director, and we have a sort of general ladder, and it was his turn. And I'd always felt a little bit uneasy about these pictures. They were incredibly successful. Uh, but I never really liked uh, the tone of some of them. So uh, knowing that Jonathan was a very good writer, I said, Jonathan, isn't there any way we can turn this around a little bit? And he wrote a really very, very good script, which was ironic and funny and satirical, but still delivered the violence and the little bit of R-rated sex and everything that had to be in it. For instance, the evil warden, he changed into a crazy woman played by Barbara Steele, and she was wonderful. He made a really good picture that did what I asked him to do. It delivered the elements that the audience who wanted to see that kind of picture would come to see, yet at the same time there was an edge of kind of, what should I say, a coldly humorous look at the film itself. Well, it's a level of hipness, for want of a better word, that I think distinguishes a lot of the work of these young writer-directors you've employed. And I think that's the magic of you as their kind of godfather and them as budding talents, is that they give you and your audience what you need, and then they get their jollies by getting in some of the things they want to express at the same time. That's always been a major part of our philosophy. We must deliver on an entertainment level what the ad and the poster and the title and everything say. And then if we can give the audience something in addition, fine, but never in place of the entertainment. Now, you had directed Barbara Steele years earlier, hadn't you, in The Pit and the Pendulum? Yes. And she was kind of a cult favorite for uh, a lot of fans, a lot of fans of the horror genre and a lot of fans of the, uh, the British film she'd been in for many, many years. And she was perfect casting here, wasn't she? Yes, it was Jonathan's idea. She had grown a couple of years old to be a leading lady, but she was still a beautiful woman who was a good actress with a striking face and figure, and Jonathan said she would be great as an evil <laughs> prison warden, and I said, you are absolutely right. Well, Jonathan Demme is certainly one of the major names in your roster of graduates, and uh, he's gone on to do such a diverse body of work, uh, and you must be very proud of what he's done. He's had a career that is very interesting to me. Some people, such as Francis Coppola or Marty Scorsese or a couple of others, jumped from doing a low-budget picture with me immediately to a big-budget success. It took Jonathan a little bit longer. He did a number of low-budget films, including several for me, started doing medium budget films and essentially learned on the job getting better with every film until he has emerged as really I think one of the greatest directors in the United States and in the world. He certainly has a distinguished roster of credits as writer and director and he did Married to the Mob, Philadelphia, uh, Silence of the Lambs uh, and of course you're in several of those films aren't you? Yes, I was in The Silence of the Lambs and Philadelphia, and it's great working with Jonathan because he keeps a very good atmosphere on the set. So everybody is contributing, everybody is helping, and people really love working with Jonathan Demme.